this one is targeting the GX470. I posted an Instagram question slash picture the other day. It was about actually about a week ago now. And I was trying to decide between these Motegi 149s, which obviously I went with, and the Relations Race Wheels, I think RR4-V was the model name. I kind of went back and forth a little bit on the style that I wanted for the GX. One of the main things I see a lot of guys doing is, is what I love about the uh, Forerunner is the TRD Pro Wheels. I think they look awesome. Uh, I love the black with just the red accent. I think it's pretty cool. And I think that's what drove me to like these Motegis. But I also was investigating around with Relations Race Wheels a little bit because I saw they had some stuff that was on sale. And keep in mind, this whole GX build is going to be completely different for me from what the M4 is. M4, the M tax is real. Everything's expensive all the way down to, uh, you know, just a simple catless downpipe. So you're spending like six or $700 just on those. Uh, full exhaust for that car is somewhere upwards of $2,000. So for this GX build, I just wanted to keep it as cheap as possible. Reasonably, uh, I didn't want to go with total garbage. And I don't think that I have with Motegi. Uh, they've got quite a good history and I've done some research on their stuff. So four of a wheel, these are about $692 I think is what I paid for all four. I went with a 17 by eight and a half, went with the eight and a half width on these to go uh, have a little bit more tire poke. So the reason I didn't go with the Relations Race Wheels for this was they have the, the faux bead lock around the edge and originally I liked that look. And I was going to go with a gunmetal gray with the black lip and the faux beadlock. I was kind of interested in that wheel then and I kind of thought it would be cool, but I went back to what was it I originally liked about this car and some of the cars I've seen people do. And the biggest thing that I liked is I love the Forerunner TRD Pro Wheels. These have that look in my opinion. Uh, there's a little red Motegi accent. And I think what I like about going with these over the uh, TRD Pro Wheels is they're actually more affordable than buying them. And also, uh, it's different. I see a ton of builds out there where everyone's just throwing the TRD Pro Wheels on the GX470s. And it's cool and all, it's a great wheel. Uh, but I, I wanted something that was a little bit different. So I decided to go with these. And I'll just grab this out here for you and show you. So yeah, this is the wheel, like I said, with the 17 inch diameter with eight and a half width on these. And like I said, I had been reading and it's recommended that you go with eight and a half ish or nine. I see some guys putting smaller width wheels with the tire setup that I'm going with. So it shouldn't be an issue. I just wanted to go, I didn't want to go with exactly nine because I, once I started seeing some examples with a larger tire on eight and a half wheel, I started seeing the nice rounded tire once it was inflated and I thought it kind of gave it a more aggressive look. So this is, this is why I went with it. Hopefully you can see this up close. I know the GoPro angles kind of suck, but one of the things I really like is it's got this little uh, red accent, Motegi logo, it's nice. It's got a nice uh, center cap here that I think this smooth it just kind of blends in doesn't stick out all obnoxious the relations race wheels are like this plastic and the method wheels I looked at those and it's also plastic and it looks like it's cheapy kind of feeling I don't know I just felt like this wheel for the price it was affordable and it looked great I love the way this looks I think the black with the uh, white car is gonna look awesome uh, so yeah that's the wheels I'll show you the tire setup I'm going with. These are pretty massive. Let me uh, get this out of the way. Throw this up here. There we go. All right, so I went with the Wild Peaks, the Falcon Wild Peaks. Uh, now this is an all-terrain tire. I kind of went with all-terrain just because I want to keep drivability for uh, paved roads. Uh, the mud terrain looks freaking awesome because it's all aggressive looking, but uh, I'm going to be doing some driving around locally too and 
uh, commuting to work. Went with a 285, went a little bit wider. 285 on the width, 70 on the sidewall, and of course 17 to match the wheels. Yeah, um, the original GX470 tires that I have on there right now are a 265, I think it's a 60 sidewall. Um, I went out and measured and you know, I'm gonna be growing the height on this a little bit, uh, probably about an inch and a half-ish. I measured this and it looks like it's around 32 inches. It might go, they claim this is the 33 setup, but maybe that grows a little bit once I inflate the tire. And mainly what I wanna do with this video is, I am having a really hard time finding guys running stock suspension with this profile tire. And so I wanna see, I wanna to try to document this better for you uh, so that you, anybody out there who wants to do this can see like what cuts I had to do, what modifications to the fenders. Of course, it's a lot wider. Uh, this, the others were 265. The height should not be an issue in the rear or the width. Um, and also, I didn't even, the biggest thing I forgot to even mention, with the Motegi wheels, I went with a zero offset. The stock wheels are plus 25 offset. And so that 25 millimeter difference is, puts you close to an inch of pulling outwards. So <clears throat> the extra tw from a 265 to 285, I grew about also the same amount, uh, a little bit less actually. So the offset, I'm hoping, I don't know, we'll see. I was hoping that the wheel offset I went with would pull the wheel away from the inside of the fender a little bit more so that maybe I don't have as much uh, rub as some people are having with throwing 285 70s, 17s. But either way, I will document what I do. At the end of all of this, I probably will do a two inch lift. But for now, uh, I, I wanted to get wheels and tires first. And I also didn't want to like have a stepping stone of getting smaller wheels and tires. So we'll see what happens. If this needs some aggressive cutting into the subframe, I don't think it's worth doing all that cutting. So if there is a lot of aggressive uh, cutting into the frame, I probably will just resort to a lift. I think from what I've read, if I go with a two inch lift, I will not have to modify and cut the uh, inner frame or the subframe. Hoping that doesn't have to happen, but regardless, down the road from now, spoiler alert, I will be doing a lift kit on the GX. So yeah, I think that about covers everything that I was going with here for this. My major goal here was to just bring you along, show you all this stuff. Next, we're gonna go ahead and get these mounted and balance and we'll come back here in a little bit I'm gonna do this tomorrow uh, so we'll come back here in a little bit and we will try to test fit them see what happens over into the lights so you can see here they are and they are looking sweet let me pull these outside so you can see these things turned out awesome Had these mounted with the uh, just some standard old school valves uh, stems. I did not go with the tire pressure monitoring system. Uh, I'm gonna disable that. It's more of a pain than it is helpful. Uh, just gotta be smart and check your tire pressure, which if you are a carb person, you should be doing that anyways and not relying on the electronics which can malfunction so yeah these look way meatier than these stock as you can see I'll show you the stock over here yeah it's gonna be a drastic improvement so look at that freaking massive in comparison 
probably, I put it right up next to it, it's probably about another, it's probably like an inch taller. Uh, so these are gonna look sweet. And they're definitely wider. And like I said earlier, these are the uh, Falcon Wild Peaks, the uh, 285, 70, 17s. And the wheels are 17 by eight and a half. And as you can see with the eight and a half wheel, we've got, you know, a little bit narrower of a wheel with a wider tire. And so you get this nice rounding effect on the tire here. It makes it look like they're just freaking bulging out and they're just stuffed on there. It looks freaking sick. So, all right. Well, those are the wheels mounted, balanced. As you can see, there's been some weights added through here for balancing them. But uh, yeah, let's pull the GX in the garage and see what we're working with as far as uh, clearance above the roof of the garage and the GX and see if we can actually use these quick jacks. looks to have worked we got her up in the air we've got some extra clearance because we got bigger wheels and tires so hopefully <laughs> that gives us enough clearance if not we're gonna need to figure something out here but overall pretty stoked about these quick jacks um, yeah, like I said, these are rated for 5,000 pounds. Um, I totally feel comfortable working with these. Uh, like I said, this is a little bit under 5,000 pounds. I'm just taking the wheels off, wheels and tires. But, all right, well, guys, it's time to get started on this. Uh, I feel like everybody here knows how to take off wheels and tires, so I'm not gonna bore you with that. I've got some uh, wheel locks on here I'm gonna need to use to take off. But other than that, it's just, yeah, taking off the wheels and tires. I'll roll the new ones in. We'll use these new lug nuts. And uh, yeah, I'll probably time lapse this so you guys don't get bored. And then I'll, we'll, we'll cut you back up uh, once the wheels are all mounted. I'm gonna mount all four wheels and then what I'm gonna do is most of the time you see people needing to cut and or modify some braces in here. So hopefully that's not the case. We'll find out. I think just the fender liner needs to be messed with potentially. Uh, and I really hope I don't need to cut into this uh, inner frame mount. In the back here, we should have no issues at all uh, with rubbing. We got plenty of clearance. Um, and also, I think I may have noted earlier, the wheels I have ordered are a zero offset, and these are plus 25. So uh, that 25 millimeter difference from the plus 25 to the newer wheels, which are zero, it's actually gonna pull the wheel out about an inch. It's like 0 0.98 inches when I ran the calculator on that. So we're gonna pull the wheel out also. So hopefully that reduces uh, some of the rub that we may have. This upper control arm is looking pretty close, but we'll, like I said, we're gonna be pulling back about an inch from that with the zero offset wheel. So that should give us some nice wheel poke and we should get some uh, more clearance with that. So overall, looks good. Got lots of room under there to work. Uh, all right, let's switch over and start working, start taking these wheels off.
just gonna lower it down and check off our wheels. Let's see how, how that turn radius is, but it's not gonna be good. it doesn't look like it's gonna be good. <laughs> I mean, there's there's like a, I don't know, we got like a, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> we got like an inch in there. Tension's like slowly settling. Yeah. All right. How much worse did that get? I don't think it really got much worse. I don't think it got much worse either. I think when we turn the wheel in, it's just gonna hit the inside, like towards the frame part of that plastic, but I don't know if it's gonna be too bad. Here it is. She's looking awesome. Uh, the first drive was a success. Uh, the cutting that we did in here was definitely needed. I think overall, at the end of the day, I think I'm gonna do a lift. Uh, right now I don't have any rubbing issues, but I'm not doing any sort of off-roading. I recommend if you're gonna be doing any sort of off-roading with these GXs that you're definitely gonna want to go with a lift kit not running uh, tires this big on stock suspension. If you're just, you want the look and you're not gonna be off-roading, then I guess maybe you can get away with it, but I don't recommend driving it uh, in too much rough terrain in its current state. This was the area we cut. I'm sure you, you can't really see it too well here, but I, I think I showed a clip earlier where it was cut at, but this little pinch weld here um, ideally I would like to have that trimmed but I'm not gonna go ahead and trim that just yet I think ideally what needs to be done is a lift so I cut a little bit of the fenders uh, the passenger side wasn't nearly as bad uh, it seemed like there's more clearance over here for some unknown reason I'm kind of wondering if it's because the fuel cells on that side of the car I think more of the weight sits on that side you can see, here's this uh, pinch weld in here. Yeah, I don't rub there. I probably would rub there if I was full locked and like going over a rock or something or a big boulder. Uh, but other than that, it's it does not rub driving around town, which is awesome. Oh, since uh, we got some off-road wheels and tires and we got that T 
TRD Pro look, I decided to uh, finally put these stickers on. I got these from Cruiser Gear, and uh, I think she's now worthy of rocking the LRD off-road stickers. I think they look pretty sick. Put them on both sides here. You can see, I think she's worthy of them now. She's looking way more aggressive. Overall, this is just insane. Wheels and tires do drastic things for the look of your vehicle, and I think this is probably, this will probably be one of the biggest changes I'll see from any mod that I'll do as far as looks go. This is just insane, I love it. So, Minimal cutting involved. It was overall a success. If there's any lessons learned, I guess. I don't really have any lessons learned. I think maybe if I ideally would change anything, I think I would not like to have cut anything in those wheel wells. Um, maybe a negative offset wheel would have gotten the wheel pulled out far enough that it would not have hit. But honestly, I think if I go any more drastic uh, on negative offset on the wheel, I think it's going to pull it out too far and I'm going to have a little bit obnoxious wheel poke. I don't think it's going to look good if I were to have gone any further. That being said, overall, this was a relatively easy install. For those people out there who say you can't put 33s on stock suspension, well, we did it. I would like to add that you shouldn't be off-roading with 33s on stock suspension. I think you need a lift kit to properly do any sort of off-roading. Uh, when you're at full lock and you're going over uh, trails, you're going to rub. You're going to rub that fender or that inner pinch weld and you're either going to slice through a tire or you're going to damage the body of the vehicle potentially. If you like the GX470 content, please hit the like button. That'll indicate to me we'll, we'll start doing some more modifications to the GX and uh, let me know that you guys are liking the content. If there's anything that you would like to see done, comment down below and say, hey, you should add this type of suspension or this type of roof rack. Let me know what you guys want to see installed. I will purchase those parts and I will install them and let you guys know how they are, give you a quick little review. And if you generally like this content or M4, BMW M4, or Yamaha FZ07 motorcycle content, hit the subscribe button because I'll be doing tons more videos like this in the future. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching and uh, see you on the next one.